Welcome to lecture one on a, this series of videos on electrical science fundamentals. In this first lecture, I'm going to give you an introduction into electrical systems. So you can see the contents here. So what is electronics? An electrical system, and then we've got Ohm's law, and then finally Kirchhoff's law. So after this lecture, you will be able to understand the following. So the basic principles of an electronic circuit. Basic electrical circuit properties. So you've probably heard of some of these at some point. So charge, current, voltage, resistance, and power. And then finally, the basic use of Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law with some um, example questions. So to start off is, what exactly is um, electronics? So electronics is the design of a circuit using electrical systems and components to effectively control the electrical charge flow. Much of the modern world is made up of electrical systems and components. And you can see I've got various examples here. So kind of as a student project here, we've got the iMechie design challenge. <clears throat> so this involved a, you can see this pipe climber, it's effectively climbing the pipe. Um, this involves obviously the use of electrical systems along with mechanical control and also elements of software programming. And again, another example here, you've got here a factory cleaning robot by um, this robotics company. And you can see here again, it's the same principle. So it requires electrical science along with mechanical control and also software to be able to perform the tasks. And you've all come across some of these. So for example, the laptop, here we've got Tesla S, it's a level two autonomous vehicle. Robot, robot here, so kind of like a humanoid robot. Smartphone, um, a Mars rover looking thing. Fighter aircraft, normal aircraft. So all these require the same fundamental um, things. So electrical systems, electrical circuits, components, control which is which is kind of links to your software and also mechanical elements as well the design of mechanical elements within these the series of videos by myself i will be taking a systems approach um, to the delivery i.e making use of the properties of the electrical technology so an electrical system is typically made up of four parts so the source the load, the transmission system, and the control. So what I have here is an example involving an electrical generator. It's applying electric voltage to a lamp, as you can see here. There is, however, a switch here. So the switch here, what you can do is effectively turn on and on off the current flow to, flow to the lamp. This here is represented by this, this um, schematic here. So it's normal for us to represent kind of um, such kind of arrangements as a schematic that looks like this, where we effectively represent things with, for example, the wires as lines. You hear this represents the switch, the lamp bulb with this circle and the X through it, the generator with a circle and a G through it. So this is a typical representation that is used and you'll see these used all the way through the teaching on this topic. So what the example does, it illustrates the following points. We've got the following two points. <clears throat> so the four components, because in this case, the component or the, the first component is the source. So in this case, it's the generator. So this is the source. This is generating effectively the, the energy or the power while well, generating the energy, um, which, as it says here, electrical system, it's fundamental. So the, the the example illustrates following. So it's electrical system, which is to transport electrical energy, in case from the source, from the source, which is the generator, to the energy converting load, which is the lamp. So then we go to the source, the lamp, which is obviously the, the, the load on the system. So you'll commonly refer to kind of the, the thing that effectively the source is powering as the load. 
We've also, as I've said, we've used an electrical circuit diagram schematic that enables you to understand effectively a circuit um, by using common symbols. These common symbols are kind of used um, in electrical circuits and they they know they they um, for best practice that effectively everyone uses the same one. So in our case, it's the UK British Standards Institution BSEN 60617. So we spoke there about the generator and the and the lamp. What we also have is the transmission load. So that effectively is the wires, the conductor. So the transmission system, the wires, the conductor. And then finally the control apparatus. In this case, it's just on off, but the control could be a little bit more um, exotic. Um, but at the moment, just an on off switch that enables you to effectively switch the, the supply to the lamp on or off. So units are important. Um, so it's important to remind ourselves of the international um, system of units, which is known as the SR units. And this is a language known all around the world. So you've probably in this table here, we've got quantity in the first column, unit in, unit in the second, and then symbol in the third column. You've seen probably a lot of these, so length, mass, time, electrical current, temperature. I'd imagine you've seen those five before. And you've seen the corresponding unit, meter, kilogram, second, ampere, and Kelvin. And the corresponding symbol, M, kg for kilogram. S for seconds, A for ampere, and K for Kelvin. All of the units used for the various technologies can be derived from these six base units. So that's important. And they've recently been redefined. Um, and these have been developed through the international collaboration with the UK member being the National Physical Laboratory, NPL. So these these people, the employees within here worked with national, international collaboration to redefine the scientific constants. And the redefinitions were launched during the Festival of Measurement, which ran between September 2018 to May 2019. And if you want to know more, have a look at the link or just put in um, put into um, Google National Instrument Laboratory new new redefinitions and it'll come with a link if you don't have access to the notes. But if you do. Click on that link and you'll have, you can have a further read. So now we're going to move on to some of the properties of an electric circuit. So what we're going to start off with is charge and current. So an electrical system generally transports energy due to the movement of electric charge, denoted um, Q, through a conductor. So Current, denoted I, is the rate of flow of charge. So current is the rate of flow of charge, i.e., and this is in coulombs per second charge. So what it's given by is this mathematical equation here, where I is obviously current, is equal to, here you can see charge, and then T here, which is time. Okay, and it's effectively this equation, this statement here describes this. So it's the rate of flow of charge with time. Okay, T here is time. So rate of flow of charge with time. So through a transmission, which in this case is going to be some wire. So you can see here again, I've got a schematic here. So I've got here um, DC voltage source, which is represented by this symbol here. And I've got here a circle with M in, which is used for the motor. And just to make, make things nice for you, here I've got a there your power source, and here you've got here your your DC motor. Right, and also here I've also annotated the source EMF, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The current flow, so you can see here the positive here, the, the current is flowing around circuit, circuit from positive to negative, and then you've got your load PD, which potential difference we'll talk about again in a little while. So again, we're using this schematic here to represent the actual circuit. The ampere A is the unit of electrical current. So the unit for this up here is current, and it's one of the six base units, as you recall on the previous slide. Both of the original and the recent redefined unit for electric circuit are rather complicated, but essentially one ampere 
is equivalently defined as one coulomb per second. Okay, so one ampere per second, where the coulomb, um, capital C here, is the quantity of electrical charge transported in the conductor, which is effectively given by equation one. So now if we move on to volt and power. So I've mentioned briefly on the previous slide EMF. So EMF is effectively the electromotive force. And what this does is it causes the current to flow around the circuit by supplying electrical energy from a source. So in this case, the source is a nine volt battery. In an ideal scenario, an ideal scenario <clears throat> normally works is it's normally the case we take in theory, but in the real world, it's not obviously normally the case. The energy introduced into circuit is dissipated to the load. So whatever the um, energy is dissipated, it's completely uh, dissipated by the load. In this case, the load is this, again, just to recap, is this DC motor. If all of the energy is dissipated in the unit load, the potential difference, so here, PD, potential difference, across the load is equal and opposite to the EMF, okay? If all the potential difference across that is used. Um, <clears throat> so the volt, if we're just going back a bit, so I've explained some of these parts here. So we're just going back now to the voltage source. So the volt, or the general definition, the volt um, denoted here V, capital V is electrical potential difference, PD, between two points on a conducting carrying um, conductor carrying a constant current of one amp when the power dissipated between these points is equal to one watt. So that's effectively the definition of the volt. So potential difference between two points. Now in terms of talking about power, so we've kind of covered um, volt. So here you can just to kind of before we get on to power, but DC voltage source. Again, this is normally sometimes referred to as PD, which is your potential difference. And this is the potential difference between two points on the circuit. The potential difference that this voltage source is introducing, um, which in this case would be nine volts because we're using a nine volt battery. Um, and that just causes, a, just to recap, it causes effectively a um, electromotive force, causes the electric current to flow by sliding the electric energy from a source. Okay. So now if we go on to power, so the watt is the unit of power, that's equal to one joule per second, with the joule being the work done. So you've probably, heard, you've probably used to hearing this before work done, i.e. when a force of one newton exerted through a distance of one meter, so that one joule is equal to one newtons a meter. So it's just some mechanical stuff there. Power in electrical system, is described, however, by the following equation. So P for power is equal to the current multiplied by the voltage. Okay, and that's quite an important equation. So the power going through that system is the current multiplied by the voltage. In this slide, I'm going to detail some of the parallels between electrical and mechanical systems. So it's interesting to note these, these parallels. So current, obviously denoted I in electrical systems and force in mechanical systems are known as the so-called through variables. Okay, the current passes through, obviously it could be through some resistor. And the voltage in electrical system and velocity in mechanical system are the so-called across variables. Note that the product of the through and the across variables will always give power in watts. So if we recall from the previous slide, so from equation five, power is equal to current, which is the through variable, and voltage, which is a cross variable, with this having units of the watt. So a similar check via dimensional analysis. So if we look at a mechanical system, the product of force, denoted N for newtons, and velocity meters a second is newtons meter per second, 
which is equal to joules a second, which joules a second is effectively equal to what? So as I've just said, force is the is the is is the parallel or the equivalent from the mechanical system to the to the electrical system is known as the through variable and velocity in a mechanical system which an electrical system is the is the velocity is so called the cross variable so what i've got here is an interesting couple of interesting um, schematics to kind of just do compare analogy of a, a mechanical system to an electrical system so you can see here the battery which is effectively your your source as we called it previously um which is your effectively creating the potential difference we have the obviously the current that's passing that's going through this circuit so through the resistor obviously if the, if the switch is closed it's going to complete the circuit and then back to this negative potential difference and then you have your resistor so in the circuit and the battery in the equivalent mechanical system here you can see the equivalent to the battery is your pump that's that's caught, that's creating the potential difference we've got here a restriction so you can see here a narrowing of the pipe which is equivalent to your um, resistor a valve which is effectively like your switch to turn the flow of the water um, on and off and the flow of the water through as an analogy to elect to in the electrical system which would be your current we're now going to move on to ohm's law so ohm's law was discovered by george simon ohm who lived between 1787 and 1854. so if we consider an electronic circuit a resistor denoted r is primarily used to reduce the current flow and also alter signal levels to divide voltages you'll see the second point in the next lecture and as a, a little definition so the unit of resistance or resistor or resistor is the ohm given here by this omega here so the ohm is the electrical resistance between two points of a conductor when a constant difference of potential of one amp applied between these points produces a current in the conductor of one amp. So we just now just take a step back and we'll go step by step to determining the, the Ohm's law. So the current, which as you recall is the flow of charged particles, denoted I, is found to be proportional to the applied voltage, denoted V given the temperature remains constant so this relationship here current to be proportional to the voltage okay given the temperature is constant in fact though few conductors give a proportionality between voltage and current and in fact the relationship is found to be this so v over i is equal to r where r is the resistance so if we look down here at this again this schematic here for a circuit what we've got again is a dc voltage source test specimen which is a resistor so you've all used resistors before so look like these what we've got here is a, a measuring um, a meter to measuring the current and a voltmeter to measure the potential difference and on this graph here you can see here the current and you can see here the voltage and obviously as these are both increased you can see the relationship and the relationship here is going to be r which is effectively this resistance here so where r is termed the resistance of the conductor okay and we can place here different resistors into this circuit to effectively as i go back to reduce the current flow and alter the signal levels to divide voltages various different things we can we can do within this well within this circuit and also further circuits so if we still consider ohm's law so if we continue this on so it states that the current denoted i here flowing in a conductor is directly proportional to the applied voltage and inversely 
proportional to the resistance, denoted R. This can obviously be rearranged into these two different forms, where obviously V for the voltage of the subject, and as you saw previously, R for the resistance is given here. The resistance R is independent of the voltage V. So what I've got here is just a quick example to demonstrate the use of these equations. So voltage measurements with respect to the ground on part of an electric circuit give the value shown in the diagram to the right. So what we have here is, you can see, we've got I for current. We've got here the voltage, um, this end of the resistor, R is the resistor. And here we've got the voltage here. So you can see you've got two different values. If the resistance of R is 2 to 12 ohms, what is the current I flowing through the resistor? Okay, so what we're going to use is equation, effectively equation 5 here. What we need to do though is from the two voltage measured, it's clear that there's a voltage difference across the resistor. So what we need to do effectively is just subtract the smaller number from the large number and we'll get 3.5 volts. Then if we use equation 5, so again equation 5 is given there, where we've just determined that obviously here is the volt, here it's 3.5. So that's the potential difference between across that resistor. And then the here in terms of the resistor value is 220 ohms. But then we determine that the current that passes through the resistor is 15.9 milliamps. So what we're now going to move on to is Kirchhoff's laws. So Gustav Kirchhoff lived between 1824 and 1887. So just as a starting point, a junction on a circuit, so a junction given here, is where effectively two paths meet. So in this case, you can see I subscript R1 and I subscript 2 for current 1 and current 2, and they meet at this junction. So the law states the current flowing into a point must be equal to the current flowing out. So we look at this equation here, I1 plus I2 here is equal to I3 based on that. Now, if we just look at it mathematically, so at any point, the algebraic sum of the currents flowing into any junction in a circuit is zero, i.e. the following is given. So sum of the currents is equal to zero. Okay, that's Kirchhoff's law for current. So what we need to take into account is the signs. So in summing currents, the, those flowing into a junction are given the opposite polarity to those flowing out from it. Because obviously in this original case, uh, well, we didn't take into account, well, we take into account the signs now. But now what we do is you can see I1, I2, these are positive, positive. I3, because it's flowing out from the junction, is given an opposite sign. So it's I subscript 3, which obviously is just the first equation given there. So that is equal to zero. And that effectively then is based on this equation here. So just as an example, if we use Kirchhoff's current law to determine the current I2 in the given following circuit. So you can see here, typical schematic of a circuit, DC um, supply there, source there. We've got a resistor, resistor, resistor. And we've got these three currents, I1, I2 and I3 that are passing through these three resistors. So if we apply Kirchhoff's law, and this might be obvious just by looking at this and just by doing a false experiment in your brain, but if we apply Kirchhoff's law to the three resistors, the sum of the currents flowing into the circuit, the sum of the currents flowing into the circuit is given by this. So I1, take away I2, because obviously what we need to do based on what I've just told you on the sums, the signs, sorry, where when summing currents, those flowing into a junction, and the junction's effectively here, those flowing in junction are given the opposite polarities to those flowing out. So I1 is obviously positive, and then these I2, because they're flowing out, and I3, because they're flowing out, need to be given a negative sign. So negative and negative. So I2, I3, and the value for, obviously, I3 is 3, the value for I1 is 10. What we need to do is rearrange the equation to make I2 the subject. So I2 is equal to I1 take away I3, where I1 is 10, obviously, and I3 is 3. So what we end up with is 7 amps. So the current flowing through resistor, the resistor here 
is 7 amps, which, as I said, is kind of obvious because you think, well, 10 amps is flowing into this junction. So what has to flow out is 10 amps. So obviously I3 is 3 amps. So that must then therefore mean that I2 needs to be 7 amps. So what we're now going to consider is Kirchhoff's law for voltages. For this, when we're looking at electric circuit, what we need to consider is the loops or the number well, the loops involved in the circuit. So a loop here is effectively a continuous path around the circuit. So you can see obviously this circuit here has one loop. Kirchhoff's law for voltage, it comes from the consideration of the conservation of energy. So if we look at this mathematically by equation seven, at any point, the algebraic sum on the voltage around any loop i.e. the potential difference, potential difference from voltage, same thing, in a circuit is zero. So the following is given. So the sum of voltages is equal to zero. What we need to take into account again is the signs. So in summing the voltages around a loop, clockwise voltages will be assigned the opposite polarity to those with anti-clockwise. So you can see here, so here's your E, so effectively your EMF that's produced via the the source here which dc um dc source direct current so in volt summing voltages across the loop clockwise voltages will be some the opposite polarity so what this means is the voltage here that's passing through the resistor passing across the resistor i should say actually and the voltage two here that's passing across this resistor are given the opposite polarity and hence you can see the arrow here the direction this one's this way and these two are the opposite direction so as an example just to go through this so if you use kirchhoff's voltage law what we want to do is determine the magnitude of v1 in the following circuit so you can see here source is 12 volts v1 which is our unknown which is the voltage passing across the resistor one and v2 which is a voltage, in this case, seven, seven volts passing across that resistor as well. So from Kirchhoff's voltage law, so summing the voltages clockwise around the loop, so effectively E here, take away V1, okay, because we know obviously it's negative, take away V2 is gonna be equal to zero. So what we're gonna do effectively is rearrange this equation to make not v2 but v1 the subject so that's the unknown so v1 here is made the subject so v1 is equal to e take away v2 which is obviously just 12 take away 7 which is 5 volts so we know here that 5 volts is the voltage that is passing across this resistor so just in summary of this first lecture on introduction to electrical systems. So the basic of the electrical systems has have been detailed. So things such as your source. So in the case we've looked at the DC source, DC battery, in this case, nine volts. Transmission, in our case is the wires. Load, which we looked at an example where we looked at a DC motor and then control, which in our case, we were just looking at on off switch, which obviously this gets a lot more complicated and advanced basic properties of a circuit have been introduced so ie charge i've given you the definition for these as well current voltage power and resistance so these are the five important properties you need to become familiar with We've then gone through ohm's law and also kirchhoff's law so using ohm's law and kirchhoff's law for current and voltage these have been introduced along with worked examples. So thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.